This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm Doyle Davidson, servant and apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in the house of Fort Worth, Texas, sent by God to your house to declare unto you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, tell us what the gospel is. How that Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to Scripture, he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the Scripture. Thank God, spare the Lord upon me, since you anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, send me to heal the broken heart, preach deliverance to the captives, go with sight to the blind, set at liberty them that are bruised. Amen. Amen. The word is nigh thee. Even in your heart, in your mouth is the word of faith, which I preach. You confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart that God is raising from the dead. You shall be saved. With the heart, that believe it unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Amen. Thank God. Amen. The word is like thee. Even in my heart and my mouth is the word of faith which I preach. You can bless with your mouth the Lord Jesus. But in your heart to God, raise you from the dead, you shall be saved. With the heart of my believe unto righteousness, the mouth of confession is made unto salvation. I repeated that twice. Once in my mouth and once in yours. Amen. How'd that go? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Um, amen. I got it bad. I got it bad. I'm about ashamed of the gospel of Christ. There's a power of God under salvation. Everyone that believe it, the Jew verse, also to the Greek. There is. It's the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, just to live by his faith. Amen. I want to welcome everyone to this broadcast. We save again on live stream, Roku, Apple TV, YouTube, other devices, and shortwave radio. Kathy Davidson, co-host, to the left, good evening, and how are you? I'm doing well. Hey, Amen. Should we get started with some Terry Bias songs? Sounds good. Let's go.
God raised me. We're going to talk about Jesus, how he was uh, brought forth out of the earth. I think we should start with him first, don't you? Amen. All right. Amen. You want me to read what I read to you earlier about in Luke? Yes, right. I do. Luke yes, I 1. Do. And this is, this is the angel talking unto, unto Mary. And it says, uh, let's, be, let's begin, let's begin, um, well, let's begin in verse 34. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Well, let's begin further. Let's see. And let's go to verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into the city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and shall bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the Highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. All right. That was Mary, right? That was Mary. She was a Jewess, right? Right. Uh, an angel visited her, said, you're going to conceive that a son, right? Right. And he's going to be the Son of God. Is that right? That is right. So let's put it this way. Jesus was a Jew. Amen. Right? Amen. His mother was a Jew. And his father was Jehovah. Right. Right? Right. And conceived by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Right? He was of the tribe of Judah, of the house of David. Okay. But he was a Jew. Right. All right? Um, do we have any more scripture here? We want to say, or read, have you read about Jesus being a Jew? No, I think that pretty much covers it. All right. I grew up knowing that Jesus was a Jew, that his mother was a Jewess. I grew up that. I grew up in a church that taught the John Wesley Methodist, Methodism holiness, or Methodist holiness. And they believed what the word said. So I grew up that way, believing that Jesus was a Jew. Now, let's say this. From here, the Lord took over my life and started leading me in directions as a small boy to grow me up, strengthen me uh, to do his will. It's incredible how God led me to do this. But when I was, well, when I was 19, I joined the Navy. And when I got in the Navy, uh, God placed me in particular places. They wanted me. I ended up in Japan, Naval Hospital, Yokosuka, Japan, and was placed in dispensary services uh, under the Naval Commander Forces Far East and Chief Medical Officer. Chief Medical Officer happened to be a captain, U.S. Navy Medical Corps, born in Chicago, parents owned a boundary, graduated University of Chicago Medical School, and he was Jew. 
named Marshall Kahn. Marshall N. Nine Kahn. His wife was a Methodist. And Dr. Kahn was under Vice Admiral Callahan, Commander of Naval Forces Far East, and under uh, Captain Cohn was Chief McCarty, Hospital Corps Chief. Under him came me. And then there were a lot, of, well, there were 50 some uh, sections under the captain's command. But I'm just talking about the basic, uh, the ones that ran his office. I answered the phone and typed for him that whatever he asked, he and I were great friends. He was one of the nicest guys I ever met. And we were certainly friends. And he was Jew, complete Jew, not completed, just Jew after the flesh. Amen. And, and his wife was not. And they were funny to talk to. But lovely people. Captain Cohen was just like a father to me. So I got out of the Navy. When I was about to leave the Navy, the captain said to me, get out of this Navy and go and do what you want to do. You can do it. Thank God. So I became a veterinarian, University of Missouri, 1962, and did what I believe was the right thing. Uh, God told me not to be a veterinarian, but to be a minister of the gospel in 1958 when he visited me. You can read about that. Uh, that was a visitation that most people wouldn't want to have. That was scary. I'm not going to talk about all this for now because I'm doing what I believe God wants. Now, let me say something to you. Jesus Christ was born years before any of us. Right? Absolutely. Right. Born of a virgin, right? Right. And she was a, a Jewess, right? Right. Conceived the Holy Ghost. Amen. Right. And so Jesus was a Jew. Is that right? Right. Right. Now, he was a man, right? Right. And in one place, the disciples uh, appeared to him, and they'd been doubting that he was a man. And maybe Thomas, I'm not sure. But I believe he was talking to Thomas about behold my hands and my side. Right? Right. Is that it? There's also another place after he was resurrected, he said, handle me. I said, handle he me. He said, handle me. Oh, I yeah. have blood. Oh, no, I have bones and what was the other one? Flesh. He yeah. said, the spirit. The spirit. Have not, not have, right. 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 Huh? Right. Amen. So he was demonstrating he was a man. Amen. Flesh and blood. Right. And no blood. Uh, well, not that time. Right. Flesh and bone. But he had blood before he died. Amen. And on the cross, right? Right. He, he was a man. But now he's still a man. Well, he didn't, yeah, he's still a man, but he was not a spirit. That was interesting to me, how Jesus appeared himself to people. I look back over my life, 
And I can see how Jesus took me as a small boy and started preparing me for the job that I have today. Uh, putting me in places to strengthen me, grow me up, teach me to get along with people, walk humbly before God. It's a great thing how Jesus did this. Now, one thing I didn't know was the job he had prepared for me. I had no idea, but I look back over my life, and much of my life was us being prepared to deal with strong people. Amen? Amen. Much. He led me to deal with very strong people. All kinds of people. Business people, non-business, rich, poor. Amen. Because he was leading me for this day. And now he sent me, changed my life. He chose me, sent me to the four corners of the earth. Amen. To, to speak the word of God without despair or fear. Right? Amen. Amen. I expect to see Jesus in a day, in person, the resurrected Jesus, the king and the priest, the king of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. Now, he's, he's been resurrected. He lives in a resurrected body. Right? Right. I don't. But he's a man and I'm a man. Amen. But he's resurrected. He's king of kings. He's Lord of Lords. I'm an apostle. His apostle. Frankly, I've been wondering how I'm going to relate to him. Now, Four or five weeks ago, he appeared on this set right out there in a big uh, light, right? Amen. So I've had that, but be interesting how I can handle it. I think about it. I don't want to mess it up, you know? Amen. I don't want to do it wrong. I want to treat him as King of Kings, Lord of Lords. And what he deserves, that's what I want to do. I wake up at night sometimes thinking about this. Amen? So, we're going to find out. I'll let you know. <laughs> I'll probably be well, I'll tell you what, I hope to be loyal. Amen. I sure do. What time is it? We've got about 32 minutes left. 30? Mm -hmm. 32. Amen. I got it, man. 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 You got anything to say? About this? About anything. Well, I've got, I've got a message. Speak. When we're ready. I'm going to be quiet. Are you finished? Uh, I, I, you know, we've got to teach you how to use your phone in case Jesus shows up. Get a picture. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> I said we've got to teach you how to take pictures with your phone in case Jesus shows up and we're not around to get oh. a picture. Oh, yeah. yeah. Be sure to get his picture. Yeah, that's right. There'd be a selfie. Don't be afraid. <laughs> you had a you had a, a time once that you you wanted Jesus to show up, and you said you can show up in the back of my car. I won't even turn around. Yeah. yeah. Who was that? That was you. That was me. Right. Yeah. He didn't come see me. 
He wouldn't come see me, but he did come see me. But he didn't show me his resurrected body. Amen. But I'm going to say it. Now, I'm looking forward to it. I'll tell you, I consider myself one of Jesus' uh, closest apostles. Amen. Well, I do. I'd have to be a fool to say, oh, no. Well, if he chose me and sent me and to the four corners of the earth to speak his words uh, without fear or uh, what? despair. What? Despair. Despair. You see, I'm already nervous. No, I'm not. I'm fighting the devil. You didn't want this message. He didn't want you to know that you could know Jesus like this. Amen. But I'm going to know him. I do know him. But I'm going to know him better. I'm going to tell you. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Now, you ready to go on? I'm ready. Actually, before I go, uh, before I speak, can I have a song? Do you mind if I... Sure. I okay. A... I want the quartet washed in the blood. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed, Are you washed in the blood? In the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking? By the Savior's side, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed, are you washed in the blood, in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white? And be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed? Are you washed in the blood? In the blood, in the soul, cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed? Will your robes be white and be washed in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for the mansion's bright and be washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed, Are you washed in the blood, in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed, Are you washed in the blood? In the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed?
You ready for the blood of Jesus 101? Turn with me to Romans 5, 1. I shared this on Sunday about how God led me to believe the gospel so that I could believe Romans 5, 1, and I knew I was not justified until I could believe Romans 5, 1. Romans 5, 1, therefore being justified by faith, by faith, you have to have faith to walk with God. It said, by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And I shared how I didn't have peace, and I knew I didn't have peace, and I didn't get that peace until I believed the gospel. Well, there's something that goes right along with this. And, and we were having a discussion the other day in Dole's office at, uh, when we were praying. And I had forgotten the rest of what happened to me when I was dealing with this. If you will turn with me to verse 9. This went right along with it. And it says, much more than being now justified by his blood. By his blood. Being justified now by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. You know, there are a lot of people that want to be a Christian just for hell insurance. Well, here's where you start. It says, but much more than being now justified by his blood. And uh, verse 1 says, justified by faith. So you got to have faith in that blood. you got to have faith in the blood of Jesus. And you know what, folks? The blood of Jesus was real. The blood of Jesus is red, just like yours and mine. The blood of Jesus was thick. The blood of Jesus had the life of Jesus in it. It was blood, just like yours and my blood. You know what? No matter what color you are, your blood is still the same color as mine. Same color. Well, Jesus had the same color blood. It was blood, and the life was in the blood. Now, Faith in that blood. Turn with me to Isaiah 59. Amen. Isaiah 59, verse 1. It says, now, why do we need the blood of Jesus for justification? Justif and, and those of you that don't know what justified is, because I'm speaking pretty much all over the world. What is justification? It, and, and when we were in Sunday school, we used to say it the easy way. Justified means just as if I'd never sinned. Just as if I had never sinned in the first place. Justification not only forgives the sin, not only takes the sin away from you, but it makes you as if you had never sinned in the first place. Hallelujah. You know what that means? That means clean. That means clean. That means white clean. That means clean. Now, uh, Isaiah 59, verse 1. Why do we need it? Verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. You hear that? Neither is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. It's not God's problem. Where's the problem? It's with us. Next verse. But your iniquities, your iniquities, your perversities, your sins have separated between you and your God. It says, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. What separates us from God? Our iniquities and our sins. He cannot even hear us. You hear that? God can he not even hear us when we have sin. Can't get close to us. It says in another place he can't look on sin. So if we have sin, he can't look on us. He can't even hear us. And you know what? He wants to do both. He wants to see us. He wants to hear us. And not only that, he wants to be in us. But he can't when there's iniquity. So what are we going to do? I want us to go to Levitical, Leviticus 4. Because it's going to show us an example of what God was doing in the old covenant that he could even be close to them. Here he is describing to Moses what they're going to do to get sin out of the camp. If they sinned accidentally. All right. Let's go to verse 13. Leviticus 4. It says. And if the whole congregation of Israel. Sin through ignorance. And the thing be hid from the eyes of the assembly. And they have done somewhat against any of the commandments of the Lord. Concerning things which should not be done. And are guilty. Notice it says innocently did it. Through ignorance. 
You know, under the old covenant, the Ten Commandments, you broke one of the Ten Commandments. There was no oops. You were dead. You were dead. Get out the stones. You're dead. But this is talking about if they accidentally, ignorantly uh, did, did a sin. It says, when the sin, verse 13, which they have sinned against it, is known, then the congregation shall offer a young bullock for the sin and bring him before the tabernacle of the congregation. And the elders of the congregation shall lay their hands upon the head of the bullock before the Lord. The bullock, the calf, the cow. They're all going to lay their hands on the cow. Why? The sin went from them and it's going to go into the cow. Notice they can't do a thing until they lay their hands on the cow. Why? That sin's got to go from the congregation, got to go from the elders into the cow. Or the cow, if they kill the cow before they get that sin on them, all they got is hamburger. You got that? That sin has to go to the cow. So it says, and the elders of the congregation shall lay their hands upon the head of the bullock before the Lord. That's why they did it in front of the congregation. So God sees it, sees it happening. It says, before the Lord, and the bullock shall be killed before the Lord. God's watching. Do you see here? God's watching. He sees the elders lay their hands on the cow that the sin transfers to the cow, to the bullock. And God's watching. He's watching. And it says, and the priest that is anointed, the one that's the, the anointed priest shall bring of the bullock's blood to the tabernacle of the congregation. They kill the cow. They kill it. It says, and the elders of the congregation shall lay their hands upon the head of the bullock before the Lord, and the bullock shall be killed before the Lord. The Lord's watching. And the priest that is anointed shall bring the bullock's blood to the tabernacle of the congregation inside the tent. And the priest, the one that's allowed to, shall dip his finger in some of the blood and sprinkle it seven times before the Lord. He sees it. God is there all the time, and he sees it before the Lord, even before the veil. And he shall put some of the blood upon the horns of the altar, which is before the Lord, and, and in, the con in the tabernacle of the congregation, and shall pour all the blood at the bottom of the altar of the burnt offering, which is at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he shall take of all his fat from him and burn it upon the altar. And he shall do with the bullock as he did with the bullock for the sin offering. So shall he do this. And the priest shall make an atonement for them and it shall be forgiven them. That one sin. They had to lay their hands on the bull before they killed him. Now go with me to uh, Hebrews 10. So now we know that God watches and he's watching and he's waiting for the blood. He's watching that the sin is passed over to the bull and then he watches them kill the bull and then he waits for the blood. And once he sees the blood, then they have atonement. They've got a covering over that sin is forgiven. Now, Hebrews chapter 10, it says, For the law, which we just read, having a shadow of good things, a shadow, not the very, not the good stuff, but a shadow of good things to come. And not the very image of the things can never, with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually, make the comers thereunto perfect, perfect, clean, clean and white, perfect. It says, for then would they have not ceased to be offered because the worshipers once purged should have no more conscience of sins. You know, if your sin, if your sin is totally justified, you won't even remember you committed it. I have seen that in my own life. I've had the devil say things, but I don't even remember. I don't even remember it. Why? Justified justified, clean, gone away like I had never committed it. You call that power? All right, it says, For then when they have not ceased to be offered, because that the worshipers once purged, should have no more conscience of sin. But in these sacrifices there is remembrance again made of sin every year. Every year they had to have that atonement where the blood, where they went into the holiest of holies. 
It says, wherefore, oh, for it is not possible, verse 4, it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away the sin. It could cover it. It could forgive it, but it can't take it away. Now, what do we have that is so much better than that cow? It says, verse 5, wherefore, when Jesus cometh into the world, he saith, sacrifice an offering that would is not. You didn't want the cows, but what did you want? But a body has thou prepared me. A body. God, just like we spoke, God gave Jesus a body. He put the word of God, the word of God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and he was with God. There were two. One was the word of God, and that word of God, that word of God became flesh. He became a Jew. Can you just imagine that Mary had inside of her, in her belly, the word of God? The word of God. And a human body, the Word of God. A man just like you and I, with a soul just like you and I. He had to have a soul just like you and I. Why? Right here. He says, wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, sacrifice, an offering that would is not, but a body hast thou prepared for me. And burnt offerings and sacrifices for sins thou hast had no pleasure. And then said I, then said Jesus, lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me to do thy will, O God. What was the will of God? That Jesus, living in that body, as a man just like you and I, he was every bit a man. Every bit a man. He had a soul like yours. He had, he had his spirit, but he had a body like yours and mine, and he had a soul like yours and mine, and he had red blood. He had red blood, and he, and he came as a man. Why? Because that man, that man born of a virgin, that man that became a man was going to be your and our sacrifice. He was going to be your and my sacrifice. He had to be a man. You know why? Because he was going to get all men forgiven. He was going to get all men forgiven. Now, turn with me to Isaiah 53. God watched Jesus grow. It says it here in verse 1. It says, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. And then that God, our God, put Jesus on the cross. He put that man on the cross. He had it planned from the very beginning of the world. Jesus was, uh, what does it say? Jesus was crucified since the foundation of the world. Why? God knew we were going to need a sacrifice, and it was going to have to be a man, and he was going to have to have blood. There was going to have to be a man. He was going to have to be able to die, and he was going to have to have blood. He was going to be just like us. God needed that blood. We needed blood that blood. We needed that blood in that perfect sacrifice. Jesus walked on this earth 33 years, and it says that he that knew no sin, no sin, 33 years the man lived on the earth without sin. You know why? The Father upheld him. You know why? Because he needed a perfect sacrifice. We needed that blood. God watched. God helped. That grace on Jesus, Jesus wasn't going to sin. He wasn't going to sin. God kept him what he wasn't going to sin. Why? That perfect sacrifice. Oh, thank God he kept Jesus from sinning. Oh, thank God he upheld Jesus. Why? Because he was going to be your and my sacrifice. And God made sure, God made sure it was going to be perfect. Now, verse, uh, let's begin in verse 4. Surely he has borne our sickness. This is Jesus on the cross, that man crucified. That man crucified. You know, it's amazing. It says, and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten, God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. 
This next verse is what I'm after. Oh, we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And look at this. And God and the Lord, the Lord laid all, has laid on him the iniquity of us all. In the Old Testament, the elders for the congregation put their hands on the bull. You see what happened here? God Almighty, Jehovah, put all our sins on Jesus. Laid them all. Laid them all on that body. Laid every sin on that body. And you know what's amazing? You know what's amazing? That, that body, that body, before it left, before the blood left him, that body, that blood, that blood, before that blood left him, that body suffered. That body, every bone out of joint, you could tell the sin was on it. Every bone out of joint, every marred more than any man, that blood, that blood didn't come out, did not come out of Jesus until he suffered. That was a suffering body that that blood came from. That blood, that iniquity of you and I was on him. Amen. Now go with me to Hebrews 9. Amen. You all right? Do what? You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. I want us to go to Hebrews 9. Now we see Jesus was put on the cross as a perfect sacrifice. We see that he did all the iniquity, like the elders laid the iniquity uh, or laid their hands on the bull. The Father laid your sin, your sin and my sin, laid your sin on the body of Jesus. Watched it. Then he had to turn his back. But then Jesus, Jesus, when when he died, when he gave up the ghost, a soldier came over and pierced his side and all that blood came out. It said out of that body came the blood and the water. Water and blood, they weren't mixed. You know why? He was dead. He was dead. He was dead. And that blood came out. And you know what? God saw it. God saw it. God had determined beforehand everything that Jesus was going to have to go through, and he saw that blood. He saw it. Now, go with me to Hebrews 9, a perfect sacrifice for you and I. Verse 11, that Christ being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, not by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, Jesus entered into the holy place in heaven. With his own blood, he went up to heaven. You know, when he came out of the the grave, immediately he saw Mary. Mary Magdalene was the first one to see him. And he said, Mary, don't touch me. I gotta go see the Father. I have not yet ascended unto my Father. You know why? He had to bring the blood. He had to bring his own blood. And he went into the holiest of holies in heaven, not on earth, in heaven. And you know who was there waiting for him? Jehovah. His father, his father was waiting for him. Can you imagine? I just can imagine what heaven was like when Jesus came with the blood because they knew, they knew when Jesus walked into that that tabernacle, the father was there and that sacrifice of that blood was going to be accepted. That sacrifice of the blood was going to be received. Jesus had done the work. God gave him a body. He was put on the cross. And now he's coming to see the Father, and he's coming with his blood, and he sprinkles the heavenly. It says, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, and that's in heaven, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Having obtained eternal redemption. Eternal redemption for you and I. Did you know you were redeemed? Did you know you didn't ask for it? But Jesus did it anyway. You know, we didn't even want it. And Jesus did it anyway. He shed his own blood. And that blood, that blood, not only eternal redemption, not only made us righteous, but this next verse. How much, oh, verse 13. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh... Remember, it could only cover it over. Look at what the blood of Jesus can do. Look at what it did do, if you will believe. It says, how much more? How much 
more. How much more? A million times more. Shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without God, purge your conscience. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. What's a dead work? Sin, iniquity, anything that separated you from the Father. That blood, that blood, that blood cleaned you. That blood justified you. That blood not only forgave your sin, but it took it from you. It says it not only took it from you, it takes it from your very conscience. Takes it out of your very conscience. That's the power of that blood. Yes, it does have ability. It has ability. It can do that. That was what, when I, when I shared about that peace between the Father, that I didn't have it, God gave me a prayer. And for months, in fact, years, I would pray. When I, I, would, when I would come up against this, I would say, Father, I thank you. I thank you that by the blood of Jesus, there is peace between you and I. Amen. Because of the blood of Jesus, there is peace between you and I. Because of the blood of Jesus that had my sin, because of the blood of Jesus shedding it for me, because of the blood of Jesus, there is peace between you and I. And you know what? Like I shared, one day I was praying that and I realized, my God, it's true. There is peace between the Father and and I, and any time there is not peace, I know the problem isn't with the Father, it's with me. And you know what I pray? Thank you, because of the blood of Jesus. Because of the blood of Jesus. And if there's anything I have to get in that blood, I'll get it in there. I'll put that blood, I know it's, it's a silly saying, but I'll say it to myself, get it under the blood, Kathy. Get it under the blood. Get it under the blood. Because of the blood of Jesus, there is peace between you and I. Don't cover it up. Don't make excuses. Get it under the blood. Get it under the blood. Get it under the blood. He can clean your conscience where you can stand there in the presence of God and say, you know what, Father? I'm clean. I'm clean. I'm clean. Oh, some of you are having an absolute fit right now. How dare you say, I'm clean? How dare you not believe what the blood did for you? How dare you not believe what Jesus did on the cross? How dare you, how dare you spurn what Jesus did on the cross for you? How dare you, how dare you not believe? what Jesus did for you on the cross and with his blood. How dare you? You know, the devil's telling you something that's a lie. The devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. That blood will clean, absolutely clean. And you can stand in the presence of God and say, Father, look at me. Look at me. I am covered in the blood of your son, and I am clean. I am clean. And if there's something that needs clean, he will give it to you. He will tell you. He is required to tell you. And you can get it, you can get it settled. Uh, believe. Believe. Believe what Jesus did for you on the cross. Do you have anything to say? We have two minutes. No. All right. Then I'm going to just take it in. The first thing you got to do, the first thing you have to do is you have to be born again. To get Jesus in you, to walk with Jesus, to get your sins forgiven, to walk in that power that the Father gave to us through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, you must be born again. Amen. Your church doesn't say it. The uh, society doesn't say it. The religion doesn't say it. Jesus said it. You must be born again. Amen. Jesus said that. Amen. How are you born again? Romans 10, 10. I'm going to read it to you. Because some of you need to see it. Turn to your Bibles to Romans 10.10. 10. Amen. Romans 10.10. 10. It says, for, uh, now let's go to verse 9. 
that thou shalt con what? Let's go to verse eight. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. You gotta say it, and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, Amen. and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Hallelujah. Thou shalt be born again. Thou shalt have Jesus in you. And you know what? When you got Jesus in you, you become one with the Spirit of Jesus. And he will lead you. He will lead you into the power of God. He will lead you to get all your sins forgiven. He says it is his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. But you must be born again first. You Amen. must be born again. So uh, we're going to we have about 30 seconds left. Let us all say together. It says those that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be, uh, shall, shall be delivered. Let's say the name of Jesus. 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 God bless. We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327. Plano, Texas, 75086. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas, 75086. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.